In the headlines for the Zawa BTV News, National Assembly discuss progress in resolving voters' petitions. And Vietnam makes effort to address challenges in rice industry. In one news, far right libertarians wins Argentina presidential election. Broadcasting from Hanoi, the capital of Vietnam, VTV News starts right now. Hello, it's 3 p.m. local time in Hanoi. You're watching VTV News. Under the leadership of National Assembly Chairman Vương Đình Huệ, the National Assembly held a plenary discussion on Monday morning to review the progress made in addressing the petitions submitted by voters during the fifth session of the 15th National Assembly. A total of 2,765 voters' petitions, which were submitted to the fifth session of the 15th National Assembly, have been forwarded to the relevant agencies. Out of these, 99.5% have been resolved. There has been an increase in the sense of responsibility among ministries, sectors, localities, and agencies in addressing voters' petitions. Localities and individuals have provided support in implementing the recommendations put forth by voters, such as amending the decree that modifies certain articles of the health insurance law to overcome obstacles in the procurement of drugs and medical supplies, managing national target programs, dispersing public investment capital, and addressing challenges in the implementation of expressway projects. Deputies praised the efforts of the authorities in resolving voters' petitions and suggested that they continue to address outstanding petitions, particularly those related to COVID-19 prevention. During COVID-19, medical units faced a rapid increase in cases and had to borrow medical supplies and antiseptic chemicals from private suppliers. However, due to issues with the procurement procedure, they have been unable to make payments to these suppliers. I recommend that the authorities provide guidance on how to settle the debt for these units. At our hospital, there are cases where outstanding debts have not been paid and are overdue beyond the fiscal year. Since the hospital has utilized the equipment, we are responsible for paying both the debts and the accrued bank interests. I recommend that local authorities take decisive action to address any remaining issues after the pandemic. In the afternoon, the National Assembly discussed the draft resolution on the imposition of top-up corporate income tax under the global anti-base erosion model rules, as well as value-added tax reductions. According to the government, the draft of the amended capital city law aims to assist Hanoi in addressing its shortcomings and current needs, ensuring long-term growth in the context during the next development phase, in addition to recommending specific mechanisms and policies for the city development, the draft also explores the possibility of implementing a city within a city model in the north covering three districts and in the west involving two localities. Hanoi's authorities are currently exploring the possibility of developing two satellite cities. One would be located in the northern side of the Red River and would include Đông Anh, Mê Linh and Sóc Sơn districts. The other would be in the Hoa Lạc area, specifically Xuân Mai Town, and is intended to become the center for education and science in the capital. This plan aims to address the issue of overpopulation in the city by encouraging residents to relocate to suburban areas. The capital city law must include specific mechanisms and regulations that are in line with the capital's characteristics. In addition, the law should consider urban planning as one of the most important factors. The northern side of the Red River spans an area of over 630 square kilometers, encompassing rural areas, forests and mountains. On the other hand, the western side of the Red River covers an area of more than 215 square kilometers. Hanoi's authorities have proposed solutions to address potential challenges in these areas. The capital city law must include proposals and solutions. For example, in order to attract more investors, we need to create favorable policies to facilitate public-private partnerships. 
Effective implementation of regulations will pave the way for Hanoi to unlock resources for the city's development. Hanoi authorities should implement more drastic policies. Hanoi and Ho Chi Minh City must be pioneers in piloting new models for development, inspiring other localities to change. Once the capital planning is approved and the amended capital city law is passed by the National Assembly, it will serve as a legal basis for the development of both Hanoi and the Red River Delta region. In October, the export value of all types of phones and components exceeded 5.2 billion US dollar, making it the highest value export items for Vietnam. According to the General Department of Customs, this represented a 3.3% increase compared to previous month. Over the course of 10 months, the cumulative export for this product group reached over 44 billion US dollar, reflecting a 12% increase compared to the same period last year. The main export market for this product group are China with over 13 billion US dollar, followed by the United States with nearly 6.9 billion US dollar, and South Korea ranking third. As of early November, Vietnam earned more than 4 billion US dollar from rice exports, a 35% increase compared to the same period last year. This marked the highest re recorded number in more than 30 years. However, the rice industry in Vietnam is currently facing various difficulties. More to follow. This company aims to process and export approximately 6,000 tons of rice by the end of this year. However, it has been facing difficulties in its rice procurement activities due to the surging prices of raw materials. We have not signed any new contracts for rice exports. Now we're only focusing on the shipment of rice for partners who have signed contracts with us. The procurement of rice has slowed down due to a lack of close collaboration between farmers and rice exporters. Authorities are divided over the stability of the relationship between farmers and companies. Farmers and rice exporters do not have a close working relationship and lack commitment. There are frequent disputes between farmers and companies. If the connection between farmers and rice exporters remains stable, farmers will have the opportunity to establish trust with traders and safeguard their rice growing areas. Local authorities should take steps to enhance productivity and foster professionalism within agricultural cooperatives and among farmers. Commercial banks have devised plans to streamline administrative procedures, making it easier for farmers to access loans for their production activities. According to the Vietnam Association of Seafood Exporters and Producers, lobster products generate an average annual revenue of 62 to 82 million US dollar. However, the supply chain for lobster from the farming area to the market has historically been very disorganized and prone to disruptions. Specifically, 75 to 90 percent of Vietnamese lobsters are exported to the Chinese market through unofficial channels, resulting in heavy dependencies on this market. The Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development has set a goal to maintain the current level of lobster production until 2025. The lobster industry, uh, supply chain faces several issues from the farming area to the purchasing, transportation and distribution of lobsters. Many insiders believe that the key priority is to establish a formal linkage for exporting lobster to the Chinese market, the primary market for Vietnamese lobsters. Prior to the COVID-19 pandemic, China had implemented regulations to increase official imports of agricultural products. Consequently, several recommendations were made to Vietnamese lobster farmers, as well as purchasing and exporting businesses, to help them make timely adjustments. In order to officially export lobsters, the first requirement is to assign a code to the lobsters, allowing Chinese importers to trace their origin. This entails that businesses and farmers must adhere to farming planning, register, and fully declare with management agencies. However, only a few farming areas are able to fulfill these requirements. I hope to sell our lobsters via official channels. I've been raising lobsters for about two decades. Most of our lobsters have been exported via unofficial channels. Some linkages have been established, but their potential has not been fully utilized. This has been a concern for us. To establish a link between the farming area and the market, 
it is essential to build a chain. However, lobster farmers possess expertise solely in lobster farming, making it challenging for businesses to establish this connection. As such, experts recommend prioritizing the connection and collaboration among farmers, businesses, and state management agencies. Those linkages must involve businesses, farmers, local and central management agencies, as well as scientists. This way, it will be easier to trace lobster origins in terms of farming areas and processes. In lobster farming areas, several cooperatives have been established to connect farming households with purchasing businesses. This has resulted in a significant increase in the official export of lobsters. The annual major shopping event Black Friday is scheduled to take place next Friday and many stores have already started running promotions in anticipation. According to e-commerce platforms, popular categories with strong sales increases at the end of the year include cosmetics, fashion, food and household appliances. However, based on the survey, 6 out of 10 Vietnamese consumers plan to reduce non-essential spending. To stimulate demand, many businesses will begin promotional programs with discount of up to 70%. Products that are for long-term use and saving for customers will be highlighted in these promotions. And before moving on to some other news, let's take a look at foreign exchange rate for today, November 20th. on VTV News, 14 fishermen in distress at sea. Popularity of public bicycle rental service increases in Ho Chi Minh City. On Monday morning, a fishing boat from Bing Ding encountered an accident off the coast of Ning Thuat and Bing Thuat. Specifically, at 3.30 in the morning, fishing boat BD98268TS carrying 14 fishermen started taking in water and was at risk of sinking. The accident happened approximately 92 nautical miles is northeast of Fukui Islands. Currently, the crew members are attempting to stay afloat on the surface of the boat. However, challenging conditions in the accident area include northeast wind at level 6, gusts at level 7 to 8, and rough seas. Early Monday morning, the temperature dropped to around 0 degrees Celsius, causing frost to cover Fancy Pan Mountains with a thin white layer. This is the first frost occurrence on the mountain this winter. When the temperatures reach 0 degrees Celsius and the sky is calm and clear, water vapor freezes, forming small white particles similar to salt. These particles spread evenly on the ground and plants, creating a thin layer of frost. As the sun rises and the temperature increases, the frost gradually melts away. The weather forecast indicates that strong cold air will continue to dominate the weather in the north for the next 10 days. During the night and early morning, temperatures will drop, increasing the possibility of frost appearing on the Fancy Pan Mountains and other high mountain areas. Frost is harmful to crops and vegetables, so it is important for people to take protective measures. The ASEAN UNESCO Creative Cities Network Conference in Hanoi took place at Hanoi Museum on Saturday with a focus on urban regenerations and sustainable development. The event held by the Hanoi Department of Cultures and Sports in coordination with the UNESCO office in the city and the UN Human Settlement Program was attended by over 100 Vietnamese delegates and 20 foreign ones from member cities of the network in ASEAN and Asian cities cooperating with Hanoi. More in the following story. The event underlined the importance of culture and creation to urban development and life quality in ASEAN countries. Participants also discussed the solutions that the network member cities in the ASEAN Plus 3 region can take to capitalize on the resources of culture and creation in the face of many urban issues caused by rapid urbanization and climate change.
We have learned so many things from this event. From other creative cities of other countries, people have come here to share stories of history, of culture, of traditional and modern societies. I think it's uh, the better for can exchange the knowledge and cooperation with the exchange the, the, the know, knowledge and know-how for the creative city in the future. The ASEAN's UNESCO Creative Cities Network Conference in Hanoi aimed to provide an occasion for ASEAN countries to learn experience in cultural resources and creation from one another. It also encouraged cities in the bloc to become members of the network. The connection between modernity and tradition will create a new generation of high-quality cultural products and services. These products and services contain higher creative contents and they would bring highly valuable content. The connection will help innovative products be more easily accepted by the public. According to the roadmap from now to 2030, every two years, a maximum of two Vietnamese cities will develop and submit candidacy documents to join UNESCO Creative Cities Network. After two years of piloting the public bicycle service, nearly 300,000 people have registered for a public bicycle rental in Ho Chi Minh City. The City De Department of Transport has reported that this service has received positive support from the city's citizens. It has provided a residents and tourists with additional transportation options, enhancing connectivity with other public transportation modes such as buses, urban railways and river buses in the city center. Hang Nga is studying at a university in Thu Duc District. She frequently rents a public bicycle in central area of Ho Chi Minh City to relax on the weekends. The weather is great today, so I plan to cycle on Le Duan and Pasteur streets, then head to Binh Thanh Market. The rent for the first 30 minutes is 21 US cents, with an additional 4 US cents is charged for each extra minute. I scan a QR code on the app, which informs me that the rental has been successfully made and the rent has been calculated on time. The public bike rental service has become a popular trend among young people in Ho Chi Minh City. Statistics indicate that there are over 700 departures from rental stations on a daily basis. Customers have provided suggestions to enhance this service. It's hard to find motorbike parking around here, especially during rush hours so it's difficult to try out the public bike rental service. According to experts, public bicycles should not only be limited to recreational or sightseeing purposes, but should also be enhanced to serve as a means of transportation for work and school within the city. Presently, there are 43 rental stations offering approximately 500 bikes to better cater to people's cycling needs and improve connectivity with buses and urban railway number one. The city plans to establish 16 new stations in District 1, along with 11 additional stations in Phu Nguyen and Gulf Up districts. The Golden Imperial Seal of the Nguyen Dynasty, known as Hoàng Đế Chi Bao, or Treasure of the Emperor, was officially handed over to Vietnam at a ceremony held at the Vietnamese Embassy in France. This important event was the result of over a year of negotiations and the implementation of legal procedures to halt the open auctions of the seal and fulfills Vietnam's request for its return. The treasurer of the imperial seal holds great cultural importance as a symbol of political power during a specific period in Vietnam's history. It also marked the transition from monarchy to the people democracy in the era of Ho Chi Minh. Returning the seal is crucial for preserving the integrity of cultural heritage, a matter of importance to UNESCO in the field of cultural heritage preservation. Moreover, it demonstrates Vietnam's commitment to fulfilling its obligations under international conventions it has ratified. The Zalai Culture Tourism Week 2023 has officially concluded. Throughout the past week, locals and tourists alike were captivated by the enchanting Gong culture's atmosphere, which showcased numerous distinctive performances and engaging activities. The event proudly presented over 1,300 artisans from five provinces in the Central Highland regions, attracting more than 165,000 tours. 
the event successfully promoted Zalai Province as a Syrian welcoming destination abundant in cultural riches. In Vietnam, teachers are highly respected and appreciated by both society and students. On Vietnamese Teachers Day, which falls on November 20th, many generations of students send their well wishes to their teachers. Despite the changes in society, there are always dedicated teachers who remain committed to their students and education. As a result, despite the passage of time, the strong bond between teachers and students has remained unchanged. This 80-year-old teacher is welcoming her students who are over the age of 50. The students bring her clean eggs and homemade dishes and wish her a speedy recovery after surgery. 40 years ago, they were her 8th grade students whom she loved as her own children. I love all of them like they're my children. I encourage them to do their best, even with small things. We were the oldest in the class and faced many issues during that time. She not only helped us overcome those issues to maintain harmony in class, but also spoke to our parents to support us. There are always dedicated teachers who wholeheartedly love their students, regardless of the time. Despite being only two years away from retirement, this teacher is still looking for ways to help disadvantaged students. This child, an orphan, has dreamed of having a bicycle to go to school for many years. I've always wished I could have a gray bicycle with a basket. I'm very happy. I am reassured now that students won't drop out of school and that I can support them with their difficulties. For nearly 1,000 years, the Confucian approach to education has resulted in teachers being highly respected in society for their knowledge and fairness towards each student. Teachers should understand every student so that they can guide them towards improvement. Despite difficulties in remote areas, many teachers still volunteer to go there, with the biggest motivation being their love for students. Coming up next in our war news, far right libertarian wins Argentina presidential election. and jungle animals illuminated a Paris exhibition. Far-right libertarian Javier Millet has won the presidential elections in Argentina. With over 99% of vote counted, Millet secured approximately 56% of the vote, while his rival, center-left finance minister Sergio Massa, received 44.3%. The president-elect has promised to reverse the nation's steep economic decline and restore prosperity. Argentina is currently grappling with triple-digit inflation, the highest in over three decades. The incoming president is expected to help the country recover from its economic recessions. Javier Mille, a 53-year-old libertarian economist, has been involved in politics for past two years. He will be sworn in on December 10th. Israel Defense Forces have released footage revealing a tunnel elegantly dug by Palestinian militants under the Gaza Strip's largest hospital, Al Shifa. The military found a 55 meter long passage 10 meters below the ground. Officials said they had discovered a deep staircase equipped with various defense mechanisms, including a blast proof door that Hamad is using to prevent Israeli forces from entering its command centers and underground facilities. However, the statement did not mention what might be, on, be beyond the door. Hamas claims to have built hundreds of kilometers of secret tunnels, bunkers, and access shafts throughout the Palestinian enclave, but denies that these tunnels are located in civilian infrastructures such as hospitals. Russia has faced unprecedented economic sanctions from the West as a result of its conflict with Ukraine. In 2022, Russia gross domestic product GDP declined by 2.1 percent. However, it is projected that the country's economy will grow by over 3 percent this year. According to Russia Central Bank's base case scenario, the country's GDP growth rate would reach between 2.2 percent and 2.7 percent this year. 
Meanwhile, Russian President Vladimir Putin stated that Russia's economic growth is expected to exceed 3% this year, which is better than the previous forecast. President Putin said that the country's economy is experiencing positive changes with manufacturing and processing contributing 43% of the growth rate. Russia has become a significant global exporter. The country's goal for this year is to supply 60 million tons of grain to foreign markets. Tigers, peacocks and elephants greet visitors at a Paris garden with biodiversity in jungle as the theme during this winter season, a report from Reuters. France's National Museum of Natural History took advantage of the shorter days, illuminating the normally discrete animals into giant replicas to highlight how essential they are to our ecosystem. We chose the jungle theme this year. When you say jungle, everyone thinks of the Jungle Book. And so, the exhibition opens with a large arch representing all the animals present in this work. But we are using this to explain that the jungle is the tropical forest. And from there, we invite the visitor on a journey, an odyssey through the tropical forests of India of course, Asia, New Guinea, Borneo, Amazonia, Madagascar, and Central Africa. Designed in conjunction with scientists from the Museum of Natural History, the sculptures are original creations lit with low-consumption LED bulbs. They are produced by China Light Festival, which uses the know-how of traditional lanterns to design light paths and immersive experiences. What is interesting is that when you are talking about tropical forests, we know that our scientific colleagues estimate that they represent 50% of the biodiversity present on Earth. And so, as soon as you look at this, you become interested in tropical forests, where almost 50% of the species of flora and fauna are present. So you raise a strong level of awareness for this very original ecosystem. The light show will be open until January 21, 2024. And now let's continue with the weather forecast. And that's all the news for today. To rewatch your program, you can log on to vtvgo.vn or download a mobile application, VTVGO. Thanks for watching and goodbye for now.